safe game review hi everyone and welcome to today's video where i'm going to be reviewing some more 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 of your save games that's right this is our 10th save game review and we have some doozies for today now the three campaigns for today are this georgia campaign in uh, 1627 which should be pretty interesting you guys know i like reviewing small stars like this then we have an austria world conquest one faith attempt in uh, 1633 and then finally we have an aq to persia run uh once again in 1623 interesting all of these campaigns right here today are uh 10 years within each other so uh i think it'll be nice to compare you know how uh almost uh what you call it i don't know 170 years of gameplay stack up with three different nations starting up with three different strengths uh georgia aq and austria right here so uh those are our campaigns for today man and i'm really really excited to jump into them let's take a look at this first one right here like i said it's a georgia campaign april 15th 1627 by uh Wule right here and let's see if this player said anything about this campaign so this player says this is my georgia run my goal was to just have fun and explore all the flavor that georgia got was suffering economically for most of the game but now economy is doing better yeah the economy is definitely a little bit of a struggle as georgia at the start man even if you expand like i don't know this much right here without fighting the ottomans or anything like that uh the economy is still gonna be pretty tough at least until you go into uh this region right here or this region right here so uh yeah let's jump into our first campaign of the day georgia april 15th 1627 all right right here we are in a little uh, georgia campaign and the first thing i can notice right here is that the ottomans have blobbed out massively but they've still been absolutely crushed as you guys can notice they've taken out the mamluks and stuff like that even established the ALS in yemen and in adal right here but they still been absolutely defeated by this uh, pretty good looking georgia right here that even owns constantinople all right let's jump into the great powers list first we are number three on the great powers list but that's because an institution is missing otherwise we'd be at number one so that's pretty good right there right off the bat and uh let's jump into the country view right here we got this 424 guy on the throne level three pretty expensive by the way uh advisor and two level one guys we'll see what that's all about i'm guessing there's a lack of admin points so that's why this guy is right here but yeah really really expensive oh and that inflation is super high man we'll jump into that pretty soon right here but uh yeah obviously lots of cultures accepted uh wait wait a minute these are the accepted ones right yeah 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 oh and he's flipped to greco georgian okay no big deal on that uh he's an empire government reform everything is looking pretty good right here minus five max absolutism and it's already past 1600s so many uh estate privileges granted but uh listen if you're not blowing out like i always say you don't even need absolutism in the diplomacy tab allied to france austria the timurids and john poor really really strong allies and russia of course is a junior partner you guys know that uh you have the ability to pu russia from the georgian mission tree so that's super super nice right there it's uh good that he pu'd them after they formed russia which means uh they'll expand into these uncolonized lands right here for him but aside from that everything is looking pretty good in the alliances and uh, subjects department right here going over into the economy inflation is really really high with without even any gold mines owned so you definitely need to bring this down uh very rapidly that's my tip right there pretty nice income from trade as well let's see the merchants are set up in aleppo basra persia crimea so uh constantinople is the main trade node aleppo is transferring to constantinople basra to aleppo persia to aleppo wait persia to aleppo oh yeah there is a route like that okay but once you get a bigger control over basra you might want to or actually it doesn't go to basra okay and then crimea to constantinople things are looking pretty good right there not maxed out on rural corruption or army maintenance uh yeah very expensive forts very expensive advisors and very expensive states as well all of these things are sort of due to inflation in the trade making about 50 percent income from trade which is actually really good for a country of this size uh in my opinion then in the trade then in the tech we have uh yeah ahead of time in every tech not having embraced global trade yeah you can embrace it if you take out some loans in the ideas we got diplo religious offensive trade honestly really good picks man obviously as an orthodox nation you definitely want to go religious excellent uh I, a second idea group pick right here diplo helps out quite a lot getting big allies obviously to help you defeat the mamluks offensive obviously buff up your armies and trade i don't know if i would go with trade for being this small but it's not a bad idea it's not a bad idea pick in the way so i have no complaints on this good job on that and the missions right here i'm guessing everything is accomplished okay except the vineyards one but this is regarding manufacturing so no big deal right there yeah excellent in the excellent stuff in the mission trade right here you're gonna take cypress you're gonna build some manufacturers pretty good job right 
right there. In the decision and policies, I don't know if I would restore Byzantium. Maybe I would stick with a Georgia playthrough. You know, of course, you can do that if you want to. So we're chilling right here with these as well. Uh, definitely activate this one and this one. Both of them are really good. So no need to not have these activated. Uh, over here under GovCap Protestant Zealots. Let's take a look at the religion. Where are they? They're in Russia. Okay, no unrest in, you know, this player's own provinces and the own Georgian provinces. So we're chilling on that. In the religion tab, 150% almost religious unity. Excellent right there. Very nice missionary strength converting away everything. So good job on that. Uh, in the military tab, a massive force limit. Actually way bigger than I thought it'd be. Uh, pretty good right there. Built up pretty high near the force limit. Uh, morale is really high. Discipline not that great, but, you know, no big deal. Uh, combat ability on galleys, on cavalry, on infantry. So that's really good right there. Russia super loyal and in the estates tab uh very nice privileges granted lots of crownland ownership if you're not planning to blob out if you don't need the absolutism everything is looking really really strong right here so you know the the way the player worded this in his description over in discord when he submitted this i thought i was gonna get like a sort of inexperienced georgia campaign and even though the borders and the size of the country really aren't that massive for 1627 by you know as georgia by 1627 you could potentially have all of this but what this player does have is really really strong man and i'm really liking the way this campaign is looking sure some border gore here and there some nations kind of angry um no real need to expand over here as georgia if you can expand this way of course if you can't go here here then definitely want to go up here but yeah i don't really have anything to hate in this campaign let's take a look at the army composition 32 these are the armies so 32 0 10 actually decent actually pretty good uh, if you're not running cav which honestly you should be running a little bit of cav as georgia if you're not running cav i'd make it 36 infantry you know so you have some extra boys right there but army composition is actually really good right here um by this point you want to start getting actually you definitely want to have a more cannons at this point and you definitely can sustain it you are making quite a bit of money like i said the economy is great so yeah minor nitpick on the army composition right here but things are looking really strong definitely go ahead and delete some forts though you don't need a lot of these over in the mountains uh, let's take a look at the government reforms right now uh autocracy compromise with the nobility sure uh yeah i don't know actually yeah maybe a strength and orc or tail would even be better right here but it's really not a big deal expand royal court maintain balance of power see this is something i don't agree with when you're orthodox definitely always 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 grant land to the monasteries man this is one i don't agree with reinforce the blah 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 for the forts right here really strong as georgia excellent right there aristo's pretty good meritocratic's good embrace the economic theory is good so yeah pretty good uh government reform picks uh this one is kind of mid and this one i definitely don't agree with but aside from that everything is looking good let's take a look at the states now so everything full stated that's really good lots of cultures accepted let's take a look at the autonomy Oh, you definitely have some provinces to lure autonomy in, but I'm guessing these were recently conquered, so no big deal on that. Now, finally, let's take a look at the buildings right here. Marketplaces build up in all of the relevant provinces. As we can see, none of these give us above two trade power. And let's take a look at trade depots. So yeah, you could definitely start building up the trade depots, but uh, there are they unlocked? They are unlocked. So yeah, I'm guessing these are recently unlocked. Courthouses. Yeah, definitely a lack of courthouses, but you're still under gov cap. So it's not really that big of a deal. But if you're planning to expand uh, way more than this, then definitely build up a lot more of them. Let's take a look at the workshops. Not a lot of workshops, honestly. Uh, this player did say they were struggling with the economy, so it's understandable that there aren't that many buildings, but right now, things are looking really good. You can start doing those burger loans and stuff like that, you know, getting some gold mines and whatnot, and now is when you definitely start focusing on the economy uh, because you weren't so far. But yeah, definitely lots of uh, provinces that workshops can be built in. Let's take a look at churches. We're pretty good on churches too. Still, uh, so many provinces they can be built in. Pretty important for Orthodox nations. Let me say that again. No barracks, but no big deal. We're doing good on manpower and force limit and army size and stuff like that so yeah the buildings are decent some manufacturers as well obviously with the you know bad economy you wouldn't have built too many but uh, definitely focus on courthouses workshops and churches you know if your country is looking like uh, like it is right here in this save game so not too much to knock on the buildings as well but i'm um, definitely gonna take away slight points for that so that is what everything is looking like man honestly pretty good game so far uh nothing really uh, else i can nitpick let's take a look at the development as well has any development been going on so Constantinople, Tbilisi, lots of provinces, pretty highly dabbed. So everything is looking pretty good in that regard. And let's take a look at the religion as well. We obviously already took a look at it in this tab right here, but uh, pretty much everything that's been conquered is uh, Orthodox. This is Turkish. So yeah, okay. I thought he would have maybe converted it or something like that, or maybe 
Uh, I was expecting to see some Greek provinces, but uh, no release and reconquer on uh, Byzantium and Bulgaria just yet. Aragon, right. And actually, business cores don't even exist no more. It's been 150 years, so yeah, you can't even do that, but at least you got claims on all of this, so uh, you can continue to expand into uh, all of these guys right here. But honestly, man, oh yeah, this is the thing that's been recently conquered, I guess. Yeah, right? Yeah, oh, we didn't take a look at this. Oh, so these are only half states. Okay, so you would be full stating them pretty soon, but uh, still no big deal. Either way, man, uh, this Georgia campaign is looking pretty nice for what it is i don't think it's a five out of five simply because of the size and some little nitpicks i had here and there but uh yeah let's go ahead and take a look at the timeline right here in this speed there we go slow expansion into some of these weaker guys pretty expected fought the great horde maybe alliance with muscovy is already on the cards expanding into these guys down here ottomans aren't pushing too far this way which is always really nice there we go some more expansion over here i'm guessing alliance blocked at this point there we go fighting qq slow and steady expansion trebizond we already have a border with the ottomans let's see oh there we go Oh, there's already the first war versus them already took some stuff there's qq right there expansion more into them uh i'm guessing he can't fight a jump there's even more expansion into the ottomans very good right there while the ottomans are still expanding themselves minor expansion over here in the north some expansion down here now there we go more expansion over here into where qq was uh there we go pushing into some provinces over here and in the ottomans once again yeah slow and steady expansion man looking very nice honestly even more expansion over here in the you know in the mashriq region more in the ottomans right here we're about to take over the entirety of anatolia soon expansion into the commonwealth too so sort of encircling the ottomans from both sides there we go there's another war versus them taking provinces in the balkans as well and we're about to wrap it up here as we near the end date of this campaign a final war versus the ottomans and uh, this player has been chilling since then and we arrive at this point so uh yeah really really good at georgia campaign man for you know whatever it is about uh 180 years gameplay so to say i uh, had some nitpicks on the army composition and on the buildings but you already talked about the economy and uh yeah you could be a bit bigger as georgia by now but i'm really liking this campaign can't give it a five out of five but for what it is that's a 4.5 out of five from me let's move on with the next one all right let's jump into our second game of the day right here the austria world conquest one faith attempt by battle charge let's see if he said anything about it ongoing austria world conquest one faith and eiou run i had to find the perfect start to get all those pus so early there's a start where denmark england burgundy all don't rival you yeah yeah, that's possible burgundy doesn't have the negative modifiers towards you and you get the plus one diplomat adv advisor then i got lucky biz formed a pu under me in nine years burgundian inheritance habsburg on castile's throne family member on england's throne ethiopia and denmark's thrones england got france denmark had norway but lost sweden i got hungry bohemia milan naples poland Lithuania through missions muscovy i put a family member on the throne kept Italy in the hre added the Teutons, livonia riga and provence and released other nations to get imperial authority up quickly was hoping congo would flip catholic but no such luck all right uh, that seems like a really, really good start right there, man. Lots of nations to PU around, but let's see if you, uh, revoke the privilege. So let's jump into this Austria World Conquest 1 Faith run, uh, on November 1st, 1633. All right, all right, here we are in our, uh, little Austria World Conquest 1 Faith run, and let's see what Austria proper itself is looking like. All right, so we got expansion over here. These are the lands that Austria owns. Norway and Denmark seems to have been integrated or inherited. Uh, provinces over here in West Africa. I wouldn't get in here this early but really doesn't matter too much uh fighting who right now fighting persia really big persia by the way and the kasanje which is down here so all of these guys are allies or subjects or vassals or something like that uh, oh, all of these guys are subjects. <laughs> Alrighty, then that's what it's looking like. But uh, yeah, let's jump into the great powers list. Uh, 8,795 dev, half of subjects, 5,600. Looking pretty good by 1633. Honestly, I would have snaked a lot more this way myself when I do my uh, Austria World Conquest runs, but it's looking very good and you're definitely going to be able to do it. You got 200 more years here. So uh, yeah, great powers list is looking very nice. Over in the government tab, 623 Maximilian, the first von Habsburg. You got Maximilian this late? I thought he forced spawned earlier than that no big deal uh level three five five advisors pretty good right here this guy's really cheap this guy's kind of expensive ish if i'm gonna be honest in the government tab lots of cultures promoted and accepted empire already in the diplomacy tab uh the privilege obviously has been revoked and let's see uh actually we're gonna take a look at the subjects later or while the pews will be easier to see here so biz great britain lithuania poland france Aragon, Castile, Portugal, Muscovy, and Ethiopia are junior partners. Lots of subjects. Vinland is a crown colony. Royal marriage to the Timurids and Mutapa. So, yeah, privileges obviously already revoked. 
uh, 16 a diplo rep right here. Yeah, we can see all of the subjects, so everything is looking really nice. In the economy tab, no inflation whatsoever. One gold mine owned over here, I guess. I don't know. Oh, no, no that's actually the tariff. Yeah, a bunch of gold mines owned. Not all of them develop, but you don't really care about all of them at this point in the game. Making very nice income from trade as well. Things are looking sweet right here in the trade tab. Yeah, the share is really good too. Very nice goods produced as well. In the tech tree, obviously way ahead of time in almost every single tech. 100 innovativeness. That's very nice. Let's take a look at absolutism. Max absolutism is 50, but for an Austria world conquest, you don't you don't need any, man. Trust me on that. Uh, in the ITS tab, Diplo Aristo, innovative quality espionage. Yeah, I would have gotten admin. Uh, if you're doing a one faith, you kind of want to get religious, which I'm not really seeing here. So yeah, I don't know how your one faith is going to go, man, especially since you haven't forced your uh, subjects to be Catholic either. So, you know, the standard opening, man, is... Um you know, Diplo admin and then uh, influence religious or, you know, any four of those, you know, influence religious, Diplo admin, something like that. So I'm not seeing influence or religious here. So I'm definitely going to give you a little bit of negative on that. You are definitely going to do a world conquest, but I don't know, man, the, with the missionary strength, that is still pretty good, but you only have four missionaries here. You get a lot from monuments as well. So you definitely want to force your subjects to be Catholic so you can convert them as well. Although conversion is going on right here. So yeah, doable, but religious is going to make things so much easier. I don't know why you don't have that. So I am going to give you a negative on that and on the no influence either. Uh, in the mission staff, no need to take a look at anything over here. Austria has a huge mission tree, which really isn't too relevant for a world conquest or one faith. Uh, in the decision staff, very nice decisions and uh, policies right here. No missionary strength ones, not just yet. Stability and expansion, way way over gov cap uh that's not very good right there and then the religion tab obviously everything you own is catholic but you don't own that much um and um yeah man no religious i just can't can't step away from that this is really irrelevant for a campaign like this you don't really care about your armies your subjects do most of everything uh combat with is 32 24 420 um yeah not ideal army composition but really strong morale and discipline right there uh, in the subject stab, what, what do you guys want me to say about this, man? Obviously, you know, the privilege has been revoked. All of the HRE guys are subjects, all of these junior partners. So it's looking really, really good right there. And in the estate stab, you know, this is a sort of a, you either go full estates or you go full absolutism. And this is, this is sort of in between, man. You just got some regular privileges active, nothing too strong for these guys. Most importantly, no, uh, what you call it? Yeah, I can't find that uh, little uh, missionary strength one, but uh, no big deal. Yeah, so either go full absolutism or full estates this is sort of in the middle which i'm not too fond of uh okay let's take a look at you know uh, it's weird to sort of judge a world conquest campaign as austria but not everything full stated but still over gov cap that's pretty interesting right there uh let's take a look at autonomy obviously it can be lowered in a lot of the places that aren't um what you call it um states i can't even actually tell if there's any trade companies active let's take a look at that so uh colonies pu's vassals let's take a look at the trade companies no trade companies all right okay so let's go into the buildings now uh there it is marketplaces do seem to be built in most of the relevant provinces let's take a look at uh trade depots no trade depots built up just yet let's take a look at courthouses yeah courthouses are everywhere man but still uh, no ability to um lower that gov cap and obviously you want to build them up in your subjects as well because uh you're going to be getting their land either way most likely by the end of the game so you want to sort of prepare yourself for that uh in the workshops right here let's take a look at that yeah they've been built in every single province very nice Churches, every single province, not upgraded to cathedrals just yet. In the army department, yeah, you don't really care about this. No manpower at all, interestingly enough. So actually, you should care about this. Build them up, build up the training fields and the soldiers' households as well. So not looking that strong in the building department, man, especially not in some of these. But uh, churches, production buildings, and uh, marketplaces are great. But definitely work on the courthouses and on the manpower stuff as well. Let's see development, some provinces over here. Yeah, lots of high-def provinces, uh, quite a lot, actually, especially these uh, Burgundian ones. So super, super high def provinces right there. And um, yeah, those things are looking pretty nice. Let's take a look at the papacy right here. Not the Curia controller, which you definitely want to try and be. If you're going for a one faith in the HRE, obviously everything up to revoke the privilege is uh, done right here. So no need to even concern yourself uh, about any of this. You're only going to click this maybe right at the end of the game. So yeah, man, the negative things that I could find so far are definitely not picking up religious or influence. Uh, both of those are going to help you out quite a lot. There's really no need to go 
innovative for your third idea group if you're not picking this up for your first one you don't really get the benefits that much you don't need uh, mill idea groups at all espionage isn't really gonna help you that much even with the aggressive expansion impact so definitely wrong idea group picks i would go diplo religious influence admin or diplo admin influence religious or influence you know i already mentioned that uh but yeah definitely negatives on uh, the ideas right here uh, and negatives on the on some of the buildings and of course on uh, not flipping most of your some of these subjects to catholic or maybe they are catholic already let's see actually they are catholic my bad yeah they have been flipped already so they just haven't converted stuff my bad on that my bad on that but yeah uh for one faith definitely not that much focus on the religion man you sort of a strong focus on um africa which can be easily done less luckily all of your junior partners oop except the 13 colonies right here are a catholic but you'll be able to easily convert this later on so i don't know man I, I guess we'll see how it pans out obviously the growth is really good by 1633 you already got the new world and africa and europe done so i guess you'll be focusing on asia last whereas uh, in an austria run i like to focus on uh, africa and this region right here southeast asia last so maybe you would have wanted to push this way a little bit more you're gonna have to pummel ming so many times they haven't blown up strong nations in india as well a really strong persia too so you'll kind of be you know pummeling your head against the wall when facing a lot of these nations over here but uh aside from that man things are looking pretty good aside from some of the you know religious focused things and the ideas that uh haven't really been focused on that much in the buildings as well but major major points for getting so many junior partners man uh things are looking really nice in that regard so the timeline right here is going to be weird because obviously austria isn't doing that much expansion itself it's mostly expanding through subjects but we're still going to take a look at it obviously you know we're puing nations right here in the early portion of the game almost no expansion from austria proper except a little bit over here so yeah byzantium is growing right there we can see that uh we can't tell who's been pu'd by this point burgundy may be right here uh britain castile all of these guys that are junior partners right now are growing there's hungary as well there's those provinces in order to be able to pu poland i'm guessing privileges um you know uh imperial reforms sorry are being passed at this point byzantium is growing even more mamluks are looking actually pretty huge right here yeah it's kind of hard to tell what's going on in these playthroughs where most most of your expansion is going on through subjects there we go byzantium is looking really strong uh expansion over here in the south of france burgundy i don't know who's a junior partner at this point right maybe muscovy has been pewed as well maybe castile portugal great britain and stuff like that these guys are doing colonization there we go all of these guys up here inherited uh hungary inherited bohemia as well let expansion in southern italy uh muscovy is growing right here if they are a subject there we go expanding byzantium rapidly i wouldn't make byzantium this big they're gonna be a pain to integrate i usually give a uh, byzantium like uh this portion right here you know sort of half of the balkans and half of anatolia but uh yeah looking real nice man it's just um maybe i would expand more this way and the negatives that i already mentioned about the idea groups and um the missionary related things as well so a very nice attempt right here but you know i've done four of these as austria and uh i i don't think it's uh you know generally the best right here i this is definitely not a five i'm gonna give this campaign a four out of five let's move on with the next one all right all right let's jump into our final campaign of the day this aq to persia run by moazim and let's see if this player said anything about this campaign so the only thing moazim said was aq to persia slash iran cav focused run with some surprises all right well let's try and uh, find those surprises as we jump into this run on april 18th 1623 all right all right here we are as iran and the first thing i'm, about, uh, I'm gonna say about this campaign is that uh I, I i like these borders quite a lot man persia slash iran one of the best colors in the game excellent flag excellent ideas as well excellent mission tree no matter if you go zoroastrian or sunni or shia shia is personally my favorite playthrough for uh, a persia run and uh it's looking very very nice yarkand is a subject as well very cool all right going into the great powers list let's take a look at that iran a number one 2600 dev looking very very, very strong right there bigger than spain the ottomans great britain portugal and so on going over into the country view right here i actually didn't take a look at the austrian government reforms i noticed that just now oh well can't go back now can we looking at the advisors here 441 that's pretty good right here shahansha kara hassan the first akkuyumu 533 right there in the government tab lots of cultures promoted and accepted and we got these uh you know uh, shia thingies right here persian influence as well so looking good right there max absolute on some 65 not sure how relevant that is for this campaign in the diplomacy tab let's see allied to france spain and jaanpur pretty good allies and we got uh, gujarat in a coalition and circassia and gazikumuk are vassals 
and then uh, cultural influenced states are Mahiran, Yarkand, and Malwa. So things are looking pretty good right here as well. Pretty bad Diplo rep uh, overextension and very bad improved relations, actually. Wow, I'm guessing a war just got done, but no big deal. We'll see what that's all about soon. In the economy tab, not making money at all. <laughs> that's not looking very strong, man. So much being spent on state maintenance and advisors and ports, man. Interest too. Very expensive armies. Why are the armies so expensive? We'll take a look at that pretty soon. But yeah, not making a lot of money at all. So that's definitely not looking very good, boys. Inflation is okay, though. Uh, gold mine only one developed at the 10, so that's pretty good. In the trade department, uh, about a third or a quarter right here coming in from uh, trade. Third, sorry, obviously 33.5 is a third. But yeah, based on the lands you own right here, you wouldn't expect to have too much uh, income coming in from trade unless you conquer all of Constantinople and Ragusa. Then you could route all of this sweet trade over to there. Uh, decent goods produced as well. For uh, Actually, no, that's pretty low for this point in the game. Uh, in the tech tab right here, ahead of time in every tech, very good. Ideas, Aristo, Espionage, Admin, Horde Diplo. All right, so lots of... Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a look at how we got Horde ideas pretty soon, but obviously lots of bonuses to cavalry right here along with the stuff we already have from the Persian ideas and missions. So pretty good for what you're trying to do. You did say this was a calf-focused run in the missions right here. They're looking pretty nice as well. Lots of them completed, but still a lot more to complete as well. Decisions and policies. We got pretty good ones right here. Stability and expansion slightly over Gulf Cap. We'll see if that's going to be a major problem or not. And this player just got done fighting a massive war, man. 150% overextended. Who did you fight? Did you really only take like seven Turkish provinces for this? Oh, over here and over here. All right. So that is the war that was completed. Yeah. That, yeah. That's uh that's a ballsy right there, man. In the religion tab, we are Sunni, interestingly enough. So no Shia or Zoroastrian playthrough right here. I do think Sunni is the weakest out of the three. But then again, uh, it does give you the calf bonuses. So I can understand why that is. But yeah, converting definitely happening. Uh, high religious unity, pretty good missionary strength as well. So no big deal on that. Decent force limit, nice morale, nice discipline as well. Combat width is 32 at this point. Yeah, this is what your army should look like, man. This is peak army composition right here. The best we've seen in 10 episodes of uh, Save Game Review so far. 34 32 no infantry man no infantry at all uh where's that calf thing right there there we go captain infantry is 105 so you can't have 100 percent uh cavalry focused armies uh i don't think there's any infantry oh there is there isn't this one the third army has infantry but yeah this is what your army should look like man right here this is at 34 32 that's very nice really strong generals as well uh that's looking really good 80 percent cavalry combat ability super super strong right there you could get a little bit more probably from something i'm not remembering i'm sure these are the subjects right here obviously lots of trade companies too let's take a look at them so yeah these right here uh punjab transoxiana west india caspian abyssinia uh yeah i don't know if you want to uh, this is trade company actually so yeah that's looking pretty good i have nothing bad to say about that and in the estates right here yeah once again you're not maxing out absolutism but you still don't have that many privileges granted so either focus on the estates or focus on absolutism don't do nothing like you're doing over here but man i'm i'm really liking those cav armies man good good shout on that uh, let's take a look at the government reforms now, not to forget them, like the Austrian one. Persian government, obviously pretty good. Noble officer core for the cav discount, awesome. Court of art and culture, this is a unique one. Decent, I would say. Maintain balance of power, sure. You could go with strength in the Ulama too. This is obviously excellent, a semi-unique one right here. That's as far as we've gotten, and uh, all of these right here are pretty good. Let's take a look at what's stated. So this is stated, the other stuff are trade companies. Okay, we're good on that. Let's take a look at the buildings, marketplaces, built up in not all of the provinces. You could put one in every single one of these and still get very nice bonuses trade depots yeah they have been upgraded in some provinces so that's pretty good right there courthouses yeah see there's your problem man there's your problem right there courthouses gotta get them up stat i don't know how you'll do that though with uh income that's not very good workshops obviously oh you need way more than this bro come on you're playing in persia one of the best uh regions for very nice trade goods right here so you have so many provinces to build them up man look at all of these gems provinces look at all of these uh dye uh sugar cotton provinces coffee spices iron salt cloth yeah yeah so many production buildings that can be built so a minus on that as well and in the mosques right here lots of them can be built as well army buildings you're not really struggling with manpower so i won't knock you on that and uh, manufacturing some of them have started to go up but you can already build all of the super super good ones oh look at all the income you're missing out on so yeah if you'd focused on building uh, workshops and stuff like that and churches in the early portion of the game by now you could be making 
Man, if I had this Iran, exactly these borders in 1623, you could have more than, a, I don't know, 500 total income here for sure. Maybe even more. Yeah, definitely way more. But yeah, lack of focus on buildings for sure. Autonomy, not a lot to take a look at right here since not all of it is stated. And taking a look at the development, we do have some uh, very nicely developed provinces as well. So yeah, really good run, man. Uh, the only thing I can really knock you for right here is the economy and the buildings. But aside from that, everything is looking pretty nice. I like the borders quite a lot. Expansion has been uh, going great as well. So yeah, a very good Iran run right here. Let's take a look at the uh, the timeline right here, starting off as uh, AQ. A very good expansion right off the bat into the weaker and into the stronger neighbors as well. Yeah, focusing on some of the minor guys on QQ, fighting the Mamluks as well. Very good. Might have an alliance with the Ottomans at this point. We don't know, obviously. There we go, expanding into a Jam, focusing on taking the lands you need for Persia. More pushing into the Mamluks. Very good. There we go, into the Mashriq as well. Sort of lock on the Caucasian border right here. Uh, sort of surrounding a Jam so the Timurids can get to them. I like doing these things as well. A slight more expansion into the Mamluks, more expansion into a Jam. Ethiopia is looking pretty big, pushing into the Timurids now. More in Arabia, more in the Mamluks and Ethiopia right here. Let's see, where's the expansion? There we go, over here in Arabia still. There we go, more expansion in Arabia once again, focusing on some minor and major guys. There we go, fighting the Mamluks again, pushing into the Timurids here some more, down south in Baluchistan. War versus the Ottomans, I just noticed that. Over here next to the Caspian Sea a little bit. And uh, there we go, more expansion into the Ottomans, more expansion in Arabia, more expansion in Egypt. There we go, very good expansion in India as well, into the Timurids up here, and we near our end date as we formed Iran pretty recently, to be honest, with a final war versus the Ottomans to cap things off. So yeah, pretty good run. I do like the Cav meme right here with the Cav combat stuff, but once again, I am going to have to take away points on the economy specifically, even though this is a pretty good run. And personally, I wouldn't go Sunni even with the slight bonuses you get the cavalry from it. I would go uh, Shia or Zoroastrian more than I would go with Sunni, but uh, uh, since I don't think that this bonus here specifically is really that relevant. Although I guess it does push you over 100, so let's not take away points for that. Either way, this is definitely not a 5 out of 5 with that uh, economy. I'm going to give this campaign, just like the Austrian one, a 4 out of 5. And that's been our final campaign of the day. So yeah, man, those were our three campaigns of the day. Uh, I guess I give the Georgia one the best, uh, you know, review or the best score or whatnot, but all three of them were very nice to look at. At. uh i'm sure or actually i hope that these runs continue and they, they were successful if the goals already weren't accomplished especially that austria one i hope you got a world conquest i hope you got a one faith but uh yeah really cool campaigns for today man and i really uh, enjoyed reviewing them but that's gonna be about it for these three and uh you know as always if you want to submit your own save games even though we have more than a uh, 200 by now so i'm not sure if i'm ever gonna get to all of them definitely go ahead and do it in the discord in the save games for vid channel and uh maybe i'll be reviewing yours by the way still Still thinking about that uh continuing your save games uh series idea that i had so uh once again let me know if you want to see that as well but uh yeah that's gonna be about it for uh today's video if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video